Akpong, the walk through YouTube. It's me again, your Palanani. And for the second consecutive week, going on indefinitely, we are back with you again with a new Let's Explain Victoria 2 specific country strategy. Now, you might notice that, uh, once more, I am not actually playing as a country featured in the video. So, people who remember last time may realize this because I consider China another AI country, like uh, the UK last episode. The thing that makes China an AI country is its military. Its military is not something you quite want to be in charge of, and the events in the Chinese Empire are basically thrown, are basically all going off the fact that you're get you're getting you're doing badly and getting curb stomped by European powers, and so on and so on. Therefore, uh, overall, I would not I would not say, especially considering that a lot of the Chinese events aren't quote unquote fair and are more made to weaken it than anything. It was. The UK would at least be somewhat feasible to play, because you wouldn't actually have to manage so much. But now that China has a sub-state system going on, and has to keep track of all of its own armies, I would say that uh, China overall is probably right now the most AI-tastic of all the AI nations. So I could tell you to go to China, put your national focus for clerks in Beijing, wait 50 years until you get one technology towards westernizing and, and be like that. But instead, uh, like last episode, I'm going to tell you how to deal with the Chinese Empire in two flavors. The first being in Asia flavored, and the second being European flavored. Let's start off with how to deal with China if you're in Asia. If you're in Asia and you're fighting the Chinese Empire, all likelihood and probability states that Europe is f either A, Europe is fighting them too, and you want a piece of the pie, or B, you're either playing not a house to fight it, you're playing vanilla, or you're just in a very bad situation and China has actually decided to attack you. This is China, by the way. This is the capital of Beijing. Very important place. In fact, one of the few places on mainland Asia that actually has a fort in it. Anyway, which will actually be burned out as the time goes on. Anyway, so a few things to know about being at war with China and Asia. Most of the, mostly, it's that uh, if you're in Asia fighting China, especially if you're Russia, but if you're a Siam with like Perban captured, one of the Southeast Asian states in general, Japan or Korea, or Tibet vying for their independence, or Kokan, or whatever happens, you may notice something about the Chinese AI, especially on the invasion. It's a little special. And by that I mean, uh, probably could not outsmart itself. I mean, this is a point where if China fought China, it would probably lose. In fact, that actually happened nearly at one point in real life history, so I guess that's pretty historically accurate. But the Chinese send out all their armies in ginormous stacks that take massive amounts of attrition from whatever province they get, go to. As Siam, in fact, despite its, much, its vastly smaller size and population, if you capture Luang Prabang and China decides to attack you, which is actually a decently common occurrence before our house divided, you are pretty much invincible, because he will never stop trying to attack you head on, going through those mountainous forested regions that take off so many armies and men and just everything due to the attrition. The only way they can possibly win is by funneling all their troops down there, which they almost never do. So that being said, attacking China as a, as a state that's very nearby and in its arm reach is a little bit of a bad idea, especially if you're a uh, country that has to worry less about the uh, supply limits like uh, Punjab or to a lesser extent Afghanistan. But if you're a place like any of the Southeast Asian states or to an extent Japan, you are at no threat from China. The second way 
is from Europe, and we'll cut to that in a second. Well, it's been a second, and you're looking at but not playing as London. The thing about Europe, as you probably might have noticed from uh, basic geography, is that it's a pretty far distance from China. So that being said, that basically means two things. One, only the UK is in a real position to attack China at the very start of the game with its positions in India. Other states may be able to get a small advantage if they capture places like Johor, Brunei, or Makran, but as for mounting a true invasion of one of the most militant states in the world at the turn of the century, in fact, number one military, uh, only the UK is able to do it. And number two is that if you're playing, especially as a continental European power, your ability to project tower onto China is going to be severely limited until Britain or the US or in rare cases places like Austria-Hungary who accidentally went into a war or something make the Suez Canal. At that point, colonization of China will have a lot more competition but it will be just in general easier as instead of having to go all the way around Africa and all the way back up to get to, to China you just simply have to cut through the Mediterranean and you're on your merry way. So, like in real life, uh, you generally will not be at war with China for the first half of the game, three-fourths of the game almost. So, with that being said, the European powers, uh, or just great powers in general, if you want to be a little bit more specific, have a, a little bit of a tactic for dealing with China, and that's using their influence. See, in a house divided, as you may know, China is divided into a bunch of sub-states. You've got Huangxi, Yunnan, Qinghai, Xinjiang, Mongolia, and Manchuria, as well as its two satellites, Korea and Tibet. So, as a great power, you can effectively cut up China into your sphere of influence. Uh, I, would no I wouldn't very much suggest going after Yunnan, though, unless you are actually Britain. But, as you may know, fearing even a sub-state like this, but any satellite state, prevents them from going to war with you, and prevents the uh, state owner from getting, mil from getting military access from them if you're at war with them. So, with that being said, you can, have, you can essentially cut your China off, for instance, by fearing Huang Shi, getting Hong Kong, Taiwan, and Port Arthur, and just keeping them under occupation while blockading their fleets. Though, I will give you this warning, if China has already gotten military access from Wangxi for any other reason, they'll still be able to just march through the Hong Kong, so not very recommended tactic to try and get that too, unless you are able to hold it. I should mention though, by the way, that uh, one thing that you might not like if you're somebody like me playing this game is that uh, in a house divided they nerfed or they buffed China's navy which means that even which means that some of the more minor European powers like Spain or ones that will generally never have a fleet nearby on hand like Prussia or Austria will generally actually lose to their pretty good sized navy until you get uh, ion steamers level technologies where you can defeat any of the Chinese ships or basic ships pretty easily. There's one thing I can worry I can tell you to worry about though. Either way if you're facing this place in that's their westernizing. You do not want China, especially the Chinese Empire, as an enemy to westernize. Double especially if it keeps Sofia Nova and Haishinwai region over here. Why is that? Because the Chinese Empire will eat all of these substates and become a gigantic civilized China with many armies, many territories to conquer, which will get slowly more advanced as the game goes on, and unlike regular standard Victoria 2, they don't have their ma massive literacy downgrade or things like that to try and keep them enunciative. So basically, if you've got to go fast and you've got to make sure that they have no ability to retaliate, because otherwise, once they civilize, you will be in a very bad... You will have a very bad day. With that thing said, overall, for your actual tactics, as mentioned, just securing their little areas that they don't have on mainland. 
So, that's all. That's about all I can say for China. Remember to try and get the sphere of influence, and hey, getting military access from the Russian Empire probably never hurt anyone, though it takes a hell of a long time to actually get over there. And if you're wondering how to get to China from the US, well, you start out with Oregon and Washington colonized, you just go there. Gosh. So that's been China. If you have any real problem with China, obviously your solution is you need more technology. So armies are I good in numbers, but overall weak, and generally pose almost no threat to anyone later in the game. So, basically what I'm trying to say here is don't go to war with China until late in the game. That's been the Chinese Empire. I'll see you back here next week where we're going to talk about the USA. Until then, see you next week, folks.